which is both the fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas Eve. Uh, there will be no Sunday morning service here in person. There will be a recorded service um, for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, that will be available if you don't want to watch a recorded service and want to read something. Um, please let the office know. I'll be putting that together soon. That can be mailed to you um, for your devotional or whatever that might be on that Sunday morning or before. Then our Christmas Eve service is at 3 p.m. Um, just the one service this year. We'll have special music, candles, and communion for that service. And then December 31st, three weeks from today, we'll have our annual service of lessons and carols um, to celebrate the Christmas season. A few other things happening. The giving tree is about to wrap up. Today is the last Sunday to bring back the gifts, so I hope that if you signed up for a gift, you've brought in the gift. They'll be sorted this week. Thank you, thank you to all of you who've given gifts, given money for the food or the gifts. Um, those of you who are helping out, uh, making all of this work smoothly. It is a big ministry, a big project, and so thank you to all who are involved with that. Christmas poinsettia orders are due next Sunday. The cost for poinsettias is $10. There are envelopes out on that table on your way out this morning for that. There are two Christmas concerts today in our area. There's one at the Methodist Church. The St. Clair Singers is their annual community Christmas concert at 2 o'clock. Down in Casco at St. Paul's Lutheran Church at 3 o'clock, um, there's a concert with an organist. His name is Christian Shane. Um, so that's down in Casco. They're collecting food items for the local food pantry down there. And that should also be an excellent concert as well. Looking ahead to the new year, we'll be starting a Bible study on the Gospel of Mark on January 10th. Um, Sign-ups for the book are due next Sunday. The book is $11. There's a sign-up sheet on the door next to my on the board next to the door to my office. Um, just a few more things here. Um, offering envelopes. The boxes of offering envelopes are out in the lobby. If you um, need a box of envelopes and your name isn't there, please let the office know. Otherwise, um, just look for your name on those rows of boxes. Also, there are 2024 wall calendars out there in the lobby. Please feel free to pick one of those up for the new year. A public service announcement. Because we have the wreaths on the outside doors, if you're here um, and you're locking the door behind you, please just give the door an extra pull. Um, sometimes those brackets, the doors kind of stick, so just give those doors an extra pull and make sure they're locked. And finally, thank you this morning, Nancy Diebold and Renee Evans will be sharing their musical gifts with us for special music today, and so we give thanks to them for that. Those are the many announcements for this morning. I invite you now to stand as you are able. We begin our worship service together with a responsive call to worship. The voice of the Lord declares, Comfort, O comfort my people. The, Lord out, the, Lord. the earth will be transformed. God's glory will be revealed. You meet us in this place as we remember your curious way. Our ears and eyes perceive no other God besides you, and so we worship this day.
Let's pray together. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and our children who are here this morning are invited to come up for a message. this morning a little bit about beginning. Oh, come on over. We have some seats on this side. Come on over. <laughs> well, I want to think about beginning. So we're almost at the end of a year, right? This is the month of December, and then, what, about three weeks, we'll have New Year's Eve, and so we'll have the beginning. Anyone know what year the next year is? What, what year is coming? Yes? 2024. 2024. So soon we'll have the beginning of 2024, right? Um, anyone get any new books lately? Get any new books? Yeah. No? Well, think about, let's think about some of um, maybe the books you already have. So when you open a book, that's the beginning of the book, right? The first page, and you know, like fairy tales say, once upon a time, we know we're beginning a new story about something. Or if you sit down to watch a movie, um, if you watch a Disney movie and the Magic Kingdom comes on, you know it's the beginning of a Walt Disney movie, right? Um, or even anyone here run or play soccer or any sort of sports, yeah. So at the beginning of a game, however that game or race starts, um, beginnings can be exciting, right? Because you don't know how the race will go or the game will go, or if you've never read the story before, it's, all right, what is this story going to be about? And even New Year's, we're beginning a new year soon and we're excited about what the year may hold for us. This morning in our reading called The Gospel, we're going to hear the first words of a book called Mark. And Mark begins his book by saying the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. That's how he starts, which is also something exciting because Mark and all of the books we call the Gospels tell us about Jesus. Some, one of them tells about his birth. All of them tell about his death and his resurrection. All of them tell about Jesus healing and teaching and all the good things that Jesus did. And so this is also an exciting thing to hear, that the good news is beginning, and Mark is going to tell us all about it. And nowhere does Mark say this is the end of the story. Usually a book comes to an end, it might say the end, or however a book ends, right? Is the story about Jesus over yet? Like Jesus is up in heaven, right? But is the story about Jesus over, do you think? No, no because we're still talking about him, right? And we're still hearing again the good news soon about his birth um, and all the love that he continues to show us. Um, so we also can talk about the good news, right? We're going to hear someone named John the Baptist talking about Jesus and getting ready for Jesus. We can also talk about Jesus and his good news. Sound good? And I think most, if not all of you, are going to do that next Sunday in our Christmas program, right? It will tell us again the good news about Jesus when he was born. All right, so let's pray, and then we'll light the advent wreath. God, thank you for the good news that um, your son brings to us and continues to bring to us for his love for us. Um, thank you for all of us and the ways you help us to tell that story about his love. Pray us all in his name. Amen. All right, so today we're going to light another candle in the advent wreath. Um, so Emily, if you want to... Go ahead and come forward and do that. This one we call the peace candle. And it reminds us of the peace that Jesus can give us in challenging and difficult times. And now we have some words to say. All right. Tommy Manuel, the world is not ready. The field is still uneven. Yet we watch and prepare to see God's glory revealed together. A spark of peace lights the way. Despite our fast fading courage, we will follow the voice calling us in the wilderness 
for the peace that hold us. And we sing. dissolved with fire, and the earth and 
everything that it is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things will be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and goodness, 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 waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of snakes, 
and that the Little Grand Canyon was a really good place to do so. In particular, this area was known for being home to rattlesnakes, a fact that I was not aware of. Oh, and by the way, during the colder months, those snakes hibernate up in those rock formations that I have been admiring. Not to be sure, one should always be careful when hiking out in the wilderness. I was particularly careful for the rest of that hike and was relieved to make it back to my car without seeing any snakes. Our gospel today also finds us out in the wilderness. After declaring that the book he is writing is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Mark quotes the prophet Isaiah, announcing the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. It's the voice of John the Baptist who appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And that voice was heard by many who flocked out to see him to confess their sins and to be baptized. And it all happens out in the wilderness. Not in the city of Jerusalem, the religious center for the Jewish people, the place where the temple was located, where the very presence of God was understood to dwell. No, this is a voice crying out in the wilderness, a surprising place for the beginning of this good news. And yet I wonder if it was that surprising to those who stood there listening to John that day. Some of those standing there certainly had ancestors who wandered in the wilderness after living, leaving Egypt on their way to the Promised Land. Some of those standing there might have had ancestors who were taken into exile after the Babylonian army besieged and captured Jerusalem. Many in that crowd would have been familiar with wilderness, even if it was through the stories of those who had gone before them. But even if it was familiar, the wilderness would have been remembered probably as a place of danger, fear, and struggle. The wilderness might also be familiar to us who are gathered here today. But in this case, I don't mean a trail in the woods or through a canyon. And I don't mean a place that is peaceful and quiet. Instead, there are experiences in our lives that are like being out in the wilderness, those times or places of danger, fear, or struggle. Those times when we feel lost, alone, or afraid. Those times when we are in pain or separated from others. Maybe those times for us are in the past. Maybe that time is right now. And regardless of whether or not we have lived or are living through times of wilderness in our lives, there is one wilderness experience we all share. And that is in our relationship with God. For we are all separated from God by our sin. We're separated by those things we have done and things we have left undone. We are separated from God by our self-centered ways, by our failure to love our neighbor as ourselves. And there are times when our sinful ways leave us, lead us into places of struggle, fear, or even danger. But there is good news for us who wander in this wilderness. John the Baptist proclaimed the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John urged the people to repent, that is, to turn away from sin and back towards God. And the people confessed their sins and heard that good news of forgiveness, all while John promised that someone more powerful than him was coming after him. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, takes place in the wilderness. And this is good news to all of us who wander in the wilderness of our sin. It's good news to all of us who wander in the wilderness of our own making or the wilderness in which we find ourselves with no idea how we got there. This is good news to all of us who are in places of danger, fear, or struggle, to all of us who are lonely, lost, or afraid, whatever the reason may be. 
Jesus, the one who came into our world as a baby born in a manger to peasant parents, began his ministry out in the wilderness. God's grace often comes to us, not in the safe, comfortable, tidy places, but in the messy, uncomfortable, even dangerous places. In other words, those places where we often live our lives, the places where we may go astray, the places where we end up because of circumstances beyond our control. For it was also on a cross where the depth of God's love was shown to us. It is in the wilderness where God meets us. But we don't stay in the wilderness forever either. The cross gave way to an empty tomb. The Israelites wandered through the wilderness until they crossed the Jordan River and entered the Promised Land. The exiles went home again. God's people do not stay in the wilderness forever. And we trust that the future God has promised will one day become reality. We look forward to a day when straight paths are cleared through the wilderness, when valleys are lifted up and mountains made low. A day when the place of danger, fear, and struggle becomes a place where new life can and will flourish. The one for whom John prepared the way has already come and will come again. Jesus, the one more powerful than John, came into our world to heal, to teach, to lift up the poor and the outcasts, and to lead us all out of the wilderness. And so as we wait for him to come again, we are invited to respond by changing our ways and turning back to God. We are invited to participate in God's work of straightening those paths, lifting up valleys, and lowering mountains. We're invited to be part of God's transforming work in the world, in those places of danger, fear, and struggle, transforming them into places where new life can flourish. Now, will we do these things perfectly? Of course not. Will we turn away from God again and go back out into the wilderness? Absolutely. But thanks be to God for the one who meets us in the wilderness and shows us the way back to God. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen.
variable. With the whole church, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed, even in difficult circumstances. We pray especially for the congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In time of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Bring an end to war and protect those who deliver aid to war-torn areas. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. Surround all who are grieving all who know depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we need before you in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant holy patience to all who are waiting this season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses or treatments. Protect expected parents. Watch for those who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Guide students, teachers, and staff at schools in our community. Make schools safe places for sound learning and new discovery. Equip and encourage all who teach. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. With you a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born. Inspire us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great, with your great and everlasting mercy. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with one another in ways comfortable to you.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need, until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
and the tray with wine, there is white grape juice in the center of each tray. If you're unable to come forward this morning, um, communion can be brought to you. Um, and this morning, children or anyone who wishes to receive a blessing will receive a blessing. I invite you now to come, for all is now ready. You may be seated. God of peace goes with you. The body of Christ given for 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 you. The body of Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 
with his grace. Amen.